Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the general form of the quadratic equation and see what we can learn from that and then also how does that apply when we use the method of factoring to solve the quadratic equation. So the general form of the quadratic equation is that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are some sort of constants. If we now want to solve the quadratic equation, we're going to set y equal to 0 because that allows us to find the places where the curve of the function crosses the x-axis. So here, let's say we have the equation where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and yes, there are two places where it crosses the x-axis. We can find those by setting y equal to 0. That, of course, means any point on the x-axis because that's where y equals 0, and then find the places where the function crosses the x-axis. Now, if a equals 1, then of course the equation looks 0 equals x squared plus bx plus c. That's the easy case, and of course harder cases is where a is not equal to 1. But before we go there, let's come over here and notice that some other pieces of information about the general form. If a, the coefficient in front of the x squared, is positive, then we know the parabola opens upward. looks like this. If a is negative, then the parabola opens downward. If you want to find the, coordinate, the x and y coordinates of the vertex, that's the lowest or highest point on the parabola, then we can do so by finding the x coordinate, which is equal to minus b over 2a. Of course, we take the negative of b and divide it by 2a, and that gives us the x coordinate of the vertex. And then if we draw a line through the vertex, a vertical line, that's the axis of symmetry between the left and the right half of that quadratic function. If we then look at the quadratic equation, we end up with x equals negative b plus or minus the square root, or I should say this is the quadratic formula as we call it. So we write x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And if we then take a look at the quantity underneath the radical, sometimes called the determinant, then we can see that if that quantity is greater than zero, there will be two solutions, two places where the function crosses the x-axis. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, then there's only one solution, only one point where the function actually touches the x-axis. And then if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then there's no real solution, because of course we cannot have a negative number inside the radical because that will give us what we call an imaginary number. Then there will be imaginary solutions, which means that the function does not cross the x-axis. There's no places where the function touches the x-axis. So let's go back over here with the case where a equals 1. And of course, our general formula looks like, or general equation looks like, 0 equals x squared plus bx plus c. And now we're going to factor that. So the factored form will be two binomials multiplied together where we have x plus or minus some constant and x plus or minus some constant. Of course, the, the signs will depend upon the signs of these numbers right here, and we'll get into more detail later. Now, we're looking for two numbers to put in here. And the two numbers, the sum of the two numbers will equal b, and the product of the two numbers will equal c. So in this case, on our example, we have 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. We're going to factor it in this form, and the two numbers we're looking for are such that the sum is equal to negative 3, that's the b here, and the b is negative 3, and the product equals negative 4, that's the c here, which in this case is negative 4. So which two numbers will give us a sum of negative 3 when we add them, and a product of negative 4? So 1 times 4 gives you 4, 1 times a negative 4 gives you negative 4, and when you add those two, you get negative 3. So those work, so it would be x plus 1 and x minus 4. A quick tells you that a 1 times a negative 4 gives you a negative 4, and a positive 1 plus a negative 4 gives you a negative 3. So that is the factored form. Then, of course, you use the property of the zero product. That means if you multiply these together and you get 0, then you can conclude that x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. Oop, x minus 4. There we go. x minus 4 equals 0. Which means that either x equals negative 1 or x equals positive 4. And so those are then the two solutions to our quadratic equation, which we solved using the method of factoring. And again, 
we can see then the relationship between the method of factoring and the general form of the quadratic equation. Of course, using the quadratic formula and using some other, uh, underst uh, other piece of understanding on the quadratic equation, you can see that there's all kinds of inf information hidden in the value of the constants a, b, and c of the general form. But at least now we have a good way of looking at the equation, understanding what it is, understanding what we're looking for when we talk about solving a quadratic equation, and then how to go about doing so when we need to use the method of factoring. And that is how it's done.